Hey, if you're going through any type of cancer or anything that's life-threatening, I want you to DM me right now. Explain to me what's going on, and I want to do something nice for somebody. I want to give somebody $10,000 today. Guaranteed. Before rapper stitches would get punched out by the game's manager in a one hit KO, before he would invite his fans on stage during a concert in Lake Worth, Florida to enjoy with him some lines of cocaine mid performance that would really piss off his wife, before he dropped his track Brick in Yo Face, before he would opt to have some Joker inspired tattoos put on his own face, Philip Katzabanis, aka Stitches, will appear there are two variations to his life story. The one that he wants us to know about includes him being arrested numerous times as a minor, him becoming a drug dealer at the age of 14, then going on to live a big wheeling, drug dealing, crazy lifestyle, but it appears there are a whole lot of holes in this story. His principal was contacted about a story he said he punched out that principal. FATALITY MOTHERFUCKER! <laughs> and the principal was like, no, I know the kid, that never happened. Also his claims to riches have been debunked by fans going public that his $10,000 gift filmed and posted via Instagram was a hoax video and that fan actually only received $100. So who really is the rapper Stitches? Well those tattoos on his face, those are in fact the real deal. That guy's watched himself one too many Batman movies. You wanna know how I got these scars? My name is Michael Cretton, documenting the life of Stitches prior to fame, here for you on Before They Were Famous. Now a lot of you guys requested this video, I read all the comments. Be sure to let me know in the comments down below who you want me to document next. Born on June 17, 1995, Philip Katzenbanis is the youngest of three brothers in a family of Cuban and Greek descent. He was barely one years old when his parents Esther and Alexander broke up and it wasn't a simple divorce either with his mother receiving a permanent restraining order against her estranged husband, who by all intel now has been defined and certified as a deadbeat father. Philip and his oldest siblings Dimitri and Alexander Jr. led a relatively normal suburban life growing up in North Miami Beach, Florida. His mom is a health insurance broker raising her boys in a two floor three bedroom townhouse and she was unlucky in love getting remarried twice and the final one ending in divorce back in 2006. Growing up young Philip was the entertainer of the family, he loved singing, he loved dancing and he would continue that throughout his youth. Now if you listen to Stitch's rap songs, he shares with the world that he was first introduced to cocaine at the age of 11. Throughout his teens he adopted the name Lil Phil and he attended G. Holmes Braddock Senior High School but he would opt to spend more of his time at other schools where he would rap battle other students. At this time he built up the reputation of being a bit of a bully and was liked by few. He would later drop out of high school he stated that it was because he knocked out his principal a rumor that would be debunked by the principal in question who went on to say yeah I know the kid it never happened. Now he states by 14 he was a full blown drug dealer in his family while they back up these claims. He was earning enough that it allowed him to move out of his mother's house, relocate to South Beach and rent a penthouse and drive exotic cars. How does a 14 year old get away with all this? Well he states he was dating older women and he'd have them do all the paperwork. He dropped his first music video filmed on a camera phone at the age of 15. This one was titled My Name Lil Phil. My name Lil Phil. Ain't nothing live. These bitches on my dick. Just for the thrill. My name Lil Phil. Ain't nothing live. Now he has stated that he was arrested 10 times as a minor, but won't confess to any of the charges. Public records do state at the age of 16 he was placed on probation, but again, the charges, well, they're not on public record. Following this probation, he decided to switch things up and do something a little different. Steve Santa Cruz, the owner of Empire Tattoos, gave the then 16 year old the stitched smile around his lips. Following that, they gave him an AK 47 on his face. Why these tattoos? Well, Stitches the rapper went on to state that the stitches serve as a metaphor. For a strong belief in the old rap saying that stitches, they get stitches. Although it kind of makes him look like a stitch himself. Rather than, you know, like, don't snitch on me, like, look what I could do to you. To me, it's all confusing. But to him, I guess it works out just fine. Oh, and as for the gun, well, that was tattooed on a whip. Apparently, it's his favorite gun. Now, Stitch's brothers, they weren't goody two shoes themselves. They got in trouble with the law when they were running their own cell phone scheme. As for Stitch's, well, he continued to sell blow and then he would hook up with other people in Miami. He would hook up with boxers, guys who worked at tattoo parlors, and eventually people in the music industry. Finally, he put together enough money to produce his own mixtape, No Stitching Is My Statement. Meanwhile, he'd found a little lady he wanted to call his own, and the dude got married. On October 31st, 2012, he married Erica Duar, a woman 11 years his senior who was once a contestant on the first season of MTV's Paris Hilton, My New BFF. 
With that out of the way, he got back to his music and with his mixtape in hand, he went on to produce a music video for Brick In Your Face and he released that to the world on World Star Hip Hop and within 6 days it had over 6 million views. Now following this success, Stitches went on to state that he was no longer able to continue his work as a dealer with the feds constantly watching him. So now he would have to make his money the old fashioned way, working hard, but he had to focus on his music. He was making club appearances for $5 to $10,000 a night, but he wanted to keep things growing. To continue to bring in hype around himself, he would get extremely proactive on social media. He did a video where he just threw his gold chain out of his car, but then a fan went to that location and grabbed the chain, and then called him out when he had brought it to a pawn shop to find out well, it wasn't even gold at all. Then there was another fan whose door he knocked on to hand her $10,000. And then when the camera stopped rolling, well he was like, yo, give me the money back. Then he gave her $100 asking her to keep it all quiet. On top of all this, there are also videos of him going car shopping. He's like, this is going to be my new whip. But then when he leaves, the car salesman, they will hold back on the information that the guy couldn't afford the down payment. Also, the guy was picking beef with the game for months leading up to his infamous knockout. So, um... Yeah, I don't know if he's barking up the right trees. Anyway guys, the rest of the story, we'll have to wait and see what happens because this is before they're famous. My name is Mike McCrath, thanks for checking out my personal channel. I do all sorts of celebrity bios on here. Be sure to let me know in the comments down below who you want me to document next. I got all sorts of good ones coming for you this week. So yeah, I'll see you guys in another video. Also be sure to subscribe, share this with the friends, and that's all I got for you. Oh, do you like my scars? Do you want to know how I got them? Nigga, I don't fuck your bitch. Shut the fuck up. Hey, your mom's sucking another nigga's dick while she's with your dad. Booty. you my game, boy. Fuck a job. Anybody who don't believe in my movement. Why so serious?